Mr Moroni. Thank you, Mr Speaker. There's a long-held saying that timing is everything, and I think uh, this bill is a case in point that timing really is everything. Why I mention that is that when the Select Committee considered this bill, we didn't know what we know today about what is going to be happening to the early childhood sector and its funding. And much of the bill, and I don't know if many speakers have um, alluded to this yet, but much of this bill, not all of it, but much of it actually does apply to the early childhood education sector, just as it applies to the compulsory sector. And I want to say at the outset that Labor is supporting this bill at third reading because the vetting procedures in it are the right things to do, particularly when it comes to early childhood education. Parents put their trust of their very young children in that system, and it's important that this parliament make sure that we have all the safety checks in place that need to be there for that sector. And so Labor supports it from that perspective. But, Mr Speaker, I would have to say that now we know that the government plans budget cuts for the early childhood education sector, it's hard to know exactly how the sector is going to afford to resource these extra requirements that this bill puts on them. The extra requirements, Minister, and the Minister seems to think that they are free, but I don't know that she understands that all the administrative requirements do actually take time, that they do cost the sector, and certainly, well, OK, so the Minister is saying she's going to pay for them now, but she's already allowed her colleagues to take $57 million away from the sector. Because earlier this week, we learned that the childcare allowance has been changed so that $57 million will come out of that sector. Government funding will be cut, cut to the tune of $57 million over four years. This will affect 11,000 families. And the Minister of Social Development actually had official advice to her in a Cabinet paper that that would actually reduce the amount of funding that providers in the sector would receive. So already, before we even get to the cuts that Anne Tolly has signalled for early childhood education, already there are cuts to the tune of $57 million that providers will not be able to use for implementing the types of procedures that are here in this bill that we're speaking about today. So we already know that the funding is in trouble in that sector, but it's about to get worse. And I would feel much more comfortable, Mr Speaker, standing up here at this third reading supporting this bill if the government would come clean on what its plans are for, for budget cuts for early childhood education in the budget. Well, the Minister is saying being patient that is a terrible message for the families of this country, who all know that they now face some cost increases in early childhood education, but they don't know what those are. And I'm not sure if the Minister understands the sort of pressure that families are under. But certainly the families who have been speaking to me about their concerns about cuts to 20 hours free or whatever it might be coming forward, they are telling me that they budget carefully every week. And they budget going forward as well, Minister. And I think the Minister needs to understand this because I know of families who are telling me that they have two-year-olds turning three during the course of this year. And they have already, they have already budgeted for what they will do when their two-year-old turns three because their, their childcare arrangements and their early childhood education for those for that child actually reduces when they turn three. And here's the minister telling them, they'll just have to wait and see. It's not good enough, minister. It's really not good enough because families are budgeting on a week-by-week -week basis about what they will spend on food, what they will spend on mortgage repayments, what they will spend on rent, what they will spend on clothing, and what they will spend on childcare and early childhood education. And all the minister can say is, They'll just have to wait. Well, it's not good enough, Minister. And what are they waiting for? They're waiting to be told how this government is going to increase the costs to those families. That's what they're waiting for. And I'm sure they're holding their breath with glee, Minister.
because that minister promised when she was the spokesperson for education on the campaign trail, she promised that there would be no increase to fees, that the fees controls would stay the same. And she also said that there would be no change to the subsidies in early childhood education. So she's now giving that guarantee again in this House that there will be no cut to the subsidy to the sector and that there will be no change to the fee control. So we look forward to that being honoured in the budget because it certainly has already been broken by her colleague Paula Bennett, who is the Minister of Social Development, because the subsidy levels have been changed already for the childcare allowance and that, has go that is going to bring an increased cost to those families. And the, the uh, Minister can use all the weasel words that she wants, but she gave the impression to the constituency, to those parents and those families, that the National Party, when in government, would not tamper with early childhood education. That's the impression that they got. Those parents voted, many of them, for that government because they believed them. They trusted them at their word, and those parents will feel betrayed if their costs increase as a result. They will feel betrayed, and they can justifiably feel betrayed if their costs increase for early childhood education, because that is certainly not the impression that that minister gave prior to the election. It is certainly not the impression that the Prime Minister, John Key, gave prior to the election, and we look forward to making sure that they honour that commitment when the budget comes on the 20th of May. But, Mr Speaker, coming back to the bill, it is a very difficult time to, to support this bill at third reading because we know that there are costs here for the early childhood education sector and we don't know what cut, cuts are coming forward for them. So it's hard for us to be, um, to be clear that this is doable, that this is practical, that this is something that the sector can afford. I was at a, a conference for early childhood educators earlier today in Christchurch, Mr Speaker, and already the sector was concerned about their ability to deal with children with special needs and children with disabilities because of the lack of resources that already hampers that issue in that sector. So already the sector is saying, even as things stand now, without any of the national government's cuts coming forward, we're already struggling to resource to look after children with disabilities and with special needs. And I heard many troubling stories about how, in order to make the resources fit, that centres were quite illegally, quite unlawfully, turning away children with special needs and with disabilities. That minister is the situation that the sector already faces. If the government reduces their income even further and cuts their funding, then it's not only the children with special needs and with disabilities who will be turned away, it will be many other children besides. And we have costs that we're inflicting on that sector through this very bill that's in front of us. Finally, Mr Speaker, I do want to move just briefly off the early childhood education sector to talk about um, the, the compulsory sector because, of course, this bill does many things that I think improves, actually, the, the, um, the ability and the, uh, the choices that government has to help schools that are failing. And I do want to report that I visited uh, Fraser High School in Hamilton um, just last week, and they um, have been subject to statutory management over the course of the last, um, the last uh, year, probably just under a year. And I was really pleased to hear them report that they are now just about to plan their school board trustees uh, process so that they can move out of statutory management and back into a situation where they have community control back of their school. And I will say to Fraser High School, congratulations. I know you're going to have a tough year, but as a local member of parliament, I'm right there behind you to support that very tough year that you're going to have, that you face going forward. And I wish you all the best. And I hope that Fairfield High School and um, newly announced just this week, St Andrews Middle School, also in Hamilton, moving into statutory management, can also follow in those footsteps and um, work their way towards a situation where they can get back into having boards of trustees again. Thank you, Mr Speaker.